My name is Kevin Talbot. I see patients at the John Ratcliffe Hospital with neurological disease, and I also do research into the causes of neurological diseases, principally using cells and models in the laboratory. So Thomas Willis was one of a group of very uh, energetic and revolutionary thinkers in Oxford who changed our way of thinking about the brain. Before Willis, people really had relied on ancient texts from the Greek and Roman era, and they stopped thinking about the relationship between what happened in life to people with problems and where that might be coming from in the brain. And Willis made us think about how changes in the brain structure might lead to the phenomena that we recognize going wrong, such as people getting weak or having problems with their speech. And that's very much the way that neurologists still think about this in the 21st century. So he was really the founding father of our whole approach to how we think about the relationship between anatomy and clinical neurology. So Willis uh, dissected the human brain, which was thought to be a rather odd thing to do, and hadn't really been done for almost 2,000 years. And one of his uh, associates in doing this was Christopher Wren, of course, who went on to be famous as an architect. And Christopher Wren drew this remarkable picture. And it's remarkable because today, if we want to look at the anatomy of the brain, we can fix it. We can actually sort of preserve the brain structure. And we have plenty of opportunity to understand what's going on. They obtained their brains from public executions within a 27-mile radius of Oxford. And they had the rights to these bodies. And they were therefore in varying states of decay. And the brain itself in life is an extremely soft substance. And so it's rather remarkable they were able to generate this kind of image I suspect it's generated through a whole series of dissections and putting it together bit by bit. And so this structure in the brain that we call the circle of Willis, which every medical student and every doctor will still remember to the end of their career, was probably put together through a series of dissections over a long period of time. And in real life, uh, it's rather difficult to actually see when you dissect the brain. So, what we can see are blood vessels in the brain that form what's called an anastomotic connection. So different sides of the brain circulation are joined up so that, in theory at least, flow can occur between the front and the back of the brain through these blood vessels. And that can sometimes preserve function when the blood vessels get blocked. In reality, this is a highly variable structure. The arteries around the base of the brain sometimes are rather rudimentary, and this connection is not always present. But in, in the CT scan here, which uses the modern techniques of computer-generated imaging to reconstruct the arteries around the brain. It's actually somewhat more difficult to really pick out the individual arteries because they're in different planes, whereas in this diagram here, they're represented as if they are all one smooth plane, which is not quite correct. So normally you have to, in images like this, you have to look through different series to actually get a full appreciation of which arteries are blocked and which are, are not. So this is a, a drawing of the brain by Christopher Wren from the dissections of Thomas Willis. This is the back of the brain and the base of the brain. And here are the hemispheres, which are the seat of all our thinking and language. And these are the blood vessels that supply the different areas. And when we say someone has had a stroke, what we mean is the, the blood vessels have become blocked. An individual blood vessel is blocked by something that leads to damage to the surrounding tissue supplied by that blood vessel. So the significance of the circle of Willis is it creates um, a bypass to a blockage, potentially. So if you have a blockage here, you might actually get flow through the other side of the circulation. In reality, because this is a highly variable structure, uh, it's still possible to get strokes arising around this area. But in principle, it provides this rescue for different parts of the brain. Every person who goes through medical school yeah. has heard of a circle of Willis. Yeah. And there are many anatomical structures which carry the name of some previous yeah anatomist, but actually the circuit of Willis is probably one of the few that will live on into the future because it's so evocative and it really represents something that people can understand and they can use in practical life in their, in their, when they're seeing patients. Mm -hmm.